I'm Shadong Chan from uh, Cornell University. <coughs> uh, I first met Jim in 1986, April 28th, at the Itaka Airport. Uh, actually, I went there for my interview at Cornell. And then next year, I met Aaron on you know, Cornell campus. I was in 1987, April. Uh, Jim, he was my mentor, uh, excellent man, uh, uh, mentor. Uh, I worked in the first few years, I worked very closely with him. Uh, his office was always open, so I can, I, have, uh, I can enter his office and discuss with him. And he has a huge impact on my work. Uh, before I went to Cornell, uh, I was a PhD student at uh, Berkeley. And at Berkeley, you know, we only work on three paths. Three paths. <laughs> one generator pass, one low pass, one uh, increasing pass, and very theoretical work. Actually, when I was at Berkeley, I usually just go to the library, not engineering library. Jimmy will, Jimmy will always challenge me. What's the application of your theory? You should work on large scale system. So after that, I, I extend my work, not just theory, but also application. And then I was able to work not three paths, but 145 path system, <laughs> a larger one. And nowadays, I work on both theory, application, and product development. And I, I, I can work on the 15,000 path system, in relation of 15,000 path system. I work on system except SIM. Uh, state estimation in SIM format, in PSSE format, or in PLS, uh, PSLF format, that's a GE format. I think the first impact that I, I, I'd like to mention in today's talk was a paper by Aaron and Saul. And they published this paper in 1995. And the title of this paper it was a clarification on the BCU method for transient stability analysis. That was published in high point transaction on power systems. Let me give you a background on, on this paper. And this is a, another related paper from MIT. They also talk about comment on the BCU method. Uh, let me talk about a little bit, a little bit background on this uh, method. We know conditions will occur on power systems okay. in different forms. And when this occurs, just like a human being, we have a heart attack, we have a cancer. Power system has a heart attack and also has a cancer. But I classify this a heart limit as a heart attack. Okay, we have a transient instability, voltage instability, small signal instability. Now, the question is, if we use a traditional approach, time domain approach to analyze transient stability, it was too slow, very slow. And uh, this uh, traditional approach cannot tell you the degree of stability, or more importantly, is how do you derive control to improve transient stability. That's a problem with the traditional approach, time domain approach. Another area is the red method. It's Without doing numerical simulation for the post-fall system, can you determine stability without numerical integration? Okay, that is the direct method. So if you ask mathematician the following question, if I give you a set of differential algebraic equations, a set of differential algebraic equations, don't do time domain simulation, too slow, and not give you control action. Can you tell me without numerical integration, can you tell us whether the system will be stable or not? And that was the direct method. And I worked on the direct method in the last 25 years. And in the first few years I worked with the gym, uh, we, we came up with uh, some conclusion. That is uh, the control UP method is a must. Okay. We must use a control UP. And 
to directly compute the control UP based on original power system model is an impossible dream. Impossible. So this explains why in the method developed in the 70s, 80s, this method failed based on this analytical result. Okay. We show this, this why the previous method failed. And that why we point out the direction of the ECU method. The BC method, the idea is this one. It's a, for the original power system model, we know it's impossible to compute to co control UEP. <coughs> impossible dreams. So we define an artificial model. And this model tries to capture the original model, some static and relationship and a dynamic relationship. Try to capture. And then we compute control UP or the reduced system and then map back to the original system after seven steps. And after certain condition, some condition, you can prove a reduced system controlling UP correspond to the controlling UP of the original system. And that's why you can get the original controlling UP. Now the question, in their counter example, in this paper, Aaron and the gym, their counter example is saying, this, uh, this uh, seven steps, one transfer safety condition may not be satisfied. That's shown in their paper. So this gives me a huge impact on my work. Okay, at that time I was working with uh, Tokyo Electric, HEPCO, and I worked with them from 1997 until this year. Because unfortunately this year they are going to remove their R&D center because the tsunami, zero money. Actually, it's negative. <laughs> they, have a, they have a huge liability. Okay, so uh, we work for the last 16 years in, in, in this development. And uh, I remember because of this paper, <coughs> Tepco said, no, no, we have to think about whether we want to continue this development. I said, oh, their counterexample violate our condition. People say, no, 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 no. We need a method that works for every case, not satisfy your condition. Okay, so, so this is uh, so I, in summary, I, we continue, I continue to work based on their counterexample. I, this is, uh, I summarize my work in this, in this book uh, published uh, two years ago. So after this, uh, this paper, I work on the improve the group property of power system, explore power system in some group property, and then develop group-based BCU method. Okay, so this is because of these uh, counterexamples, I, 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 I continue to work on this one, explore some special property of power system. And then today I'm very happy to report that this package, this method was evaluated at the PJM uh, uh, two or three years ago. Okay. Their system is this system. 12,000 bus, 3,000 contingencies. At PJM, they look ahead, 30 minutes ahead, is to match the actual situation. And they assign five minutes, allow you to do do contingency analysis, only five minutes. So your method needs to work on their system, finish every case, the contingency between 1.5 seconds to two seconds. So this is their model. Each contingency is about 15,000 differential equation plus 40,000 algebra equation, one contingency. So this is the size of their model for each contingency. It's a time domain model, so that's why it's so comprehensive. And you need to finish one each contingency with this size, with this size, 1.5 seconds on one node. So their evaluations, they evaluate on 5.29 million contingencies over the course of one year. All together, it's about 5.29 million contingencies. We want to evaluate the performance, okay, whether you can meet their requirement. 
So from today's mention, PGM they use Siemens uh, EMS system. So the data format is PSSE uh, data format, contingency list, dynamic data, and the copy is you to from the 3,000 contingencies, screen out stable cases, sending 15% at most to time domain simulation. <coughs> so from there you can conclude uh, the, which one is insecure, which one is critical, which one is stable, the CCP, the energy margin, all of this information. Because of ECU and the time domain uh, simulation, and then from here you can conclude what's a contingency, insecure contingency, critical, or uh, swing curves, or these are critical contingencies. And then you can design control, event control against uh, insecure contingencies and uh, enhancement control for uh, critical contingencies. Okay. And this, we can finish about 10 minutes or 3,000 contingencies. Of course, Kitchen also continue to do the uh, uh, limit, okay. the transfer limit on their interface, and then finish in another seven minutes. So they can finish in 15 minutes. According, so in their evaluation, they use this one and use PowerTech Lab time domain for verification. So that is online, this is offline. So as I mentioned, for a total of 5.29 million contingencies, the, the, this is from their evaluation report from PJM. They report the performance is 100% in capturing unstable contingencies, 100%. The speed is 1.35 seconds per contingency, which is a 15,000 differential equation, 40,000 algebra <coughs> equation. The capture rate, this is a good number. Their guidelines at least must be 85%. So for 100 stable contingencies, you must filter out 85%. And our performance is between 92% to 99.5%. <clears throat> and that is an online application because we don't have opportunity to tune parameter. <coughs> when you ship a package, a PGM, that's it. You cannot adjust your parameter. Okay, two minutes. Off. So uh, this is my truly belief. Uh, with the PMU, which gives you real-time information, with the EMS system, give you the system model. With the online computation, give you some assessment and control information. And then we should integrate together these three pieces of information. Okay, so with the PMU, we get the needle part, the real-time information. Why is your current line flow? Threshold value is from computation, online computation. So you know where you are right now, you know where is your limit. And that is your current margin. <clears throat> so this margin can be voltage stability, thermal limit, voltage violation, or transient stability. Uh, so uh, we also did a project at uh, Toshiba, uh, created Capco, in this uh, PMU-based real-time voltage stability monitoring and enhancement in 2011. Last year is for transient stability uh, monitoring and enhancement. Uh, this year, we are doing the following. Okay. How do you detect real-time the critical contingency based on PMU? So you just observe the PMU information. How can you detect, oh, right now there's a critical contingency occur at which location? So, so based on the Y area, that's the PMU information. Based on your computation, based on a lot of detection algorithm, you are able to detect this is a critical contingency, or this is not critical contingency. We can forget about it. Uh, my time is up. Okay. Then I want to say my leg. Uh, my negative impact from a gym and Aaron, even up to now. 
I was given a, a, I was doing a project at Dubai. And because of this conference, then they changed my direction. <laughs> so I was going to Osaka for a two days workshop in Japan, Osaka. As a result, I changed my direction. Coming <laughs> back to, <laughs> to here. And then after this uh, conference, I will take a direct flight to Osaka. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs>